All right, people, it has been a while. You know where I am. Look at those fish back there, Fishing Tackle Unlimited. It has been a while since uh, we've talked to uh, Uncle Kerry, uh, Kerry Marcus here at Fishing Tackle Unlimited. And uh, I had a question for him that came up uh, kind of born from the, the podcast, but it's a common one, and it's one that, uh, that I think Kerry's going to be able to help us with, and that is baits that uh, are not commonly used anymore. Great fishing baits. You know, everybody falls into that rut of soft plastic, top water, Maybe, uh, you know, maybe some sort of corky or something along those lines. And they forget about the great baits. But here he is, fresh off the tiki bar, <laughs> right, right from the tiki bar, Where, Uncle Kerry. Where's my Mai Tai? <laughs> he needs his Mai Tai. All right, Kerry, you yeah, I, I, you I knew you would I be good. Got, gotten, I, I forgot to get it out. That, that's a perfect example of what this conversation is going to be about yeah i forget forgot to get out just like a 52 and a 51 in mirror lure mirror lure they've yeah. been around forever yeah and they're sort of like what we're going to talk about here about spoons mm -hmm. young guys don't use those lures yeah they, they some of them never have they they've used some soft dines mm -hmm. which are sort of a yeah know, a plug yeah but the hard bait mirror lure thing that that brought all of us into fishing here mm -hmm. for speckled trout and redfish and yeah. all that sort of stuff Heck, I've caught everything on. I've caught a triple tail on, on a mirror lure. On a mirror lure. Yeah. I've caught flounder on a mirror lure. Mm -hmm. I've had ladyfish. Tear, how do ladyfish tear up a lure? They tear, they tear up everything. No they tear up everything. They have, you catch them on a fly and there's no feathers left. <laughs> and there's a little ladyfish about like this. I don't know how that happens. All right, so let, let, anyway. me, let me just look at, let me show everybody what we're looking at here. Because some of these may be foreign to some of our uh, younger uh, viewers and listeners. Um, but let's start over here. Like these are baits that flat out catch fish. Explain why people don't use them first of all. If we fish Louisiana a lot, we'll fish spinner baits for redfish and trout mm -hmm. a lot. Mm -hmm. But over here in Texas, very few people use them. We sell them, but it's for people that are going to Louisiana. Yeah. And they talk to their guide buddy and he said, well, you gotta bring some of the spinner baits, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and so they buy some of these. But for fishing around here, not that many people use these things. But they catch fish. And they're, they're very much like the next lure that we'll talk about. Mm -hmm. They're mindless. You, don't, you cast it and reel it in. Mm -hmm. And you let the, the vibration of the spinner blade yeah. do all the work for you. Yeah. You literally just cast it and reel it back, cast it and reel it back. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do a dadgum thing. These are designed, obviously, redfish magic with a, a blackened hook and a, a, a stiffer uh, bar here to mm -hmm. hold your, your Colorado blade. Um, so it'll stand up to something fairly tough like a redfish. Yeah. But that one I love. They will get real mad at what, what you and I normally would think of as just a bass lure. Yeah. It's just another spinnerbait. Mm -hmm. This is where spinnerbait sort of came from. Yeah. Um, in, in, in the bass world. And they will get real angry at this at this type of, of just regular bass spinnerbait that, mm -hmm. that any any freshwater guy has in his box. Yeah. And again, color is so subjective. Mm -hmm. They used to have several colors. I remember fishing with a guide on Lake Fork years ago, mm -hmm. and he was saying the only thing's working right now is a black spinnerbait. I look at him and I don't have a single one in my, in my, <laughs> my enormous bass tackle box. Yeah. Right 78 pounds worth of lures, <laughs> not one black spinner bait. So he's in the front of the boat, which I've never understood that from the point of view of guides. He's in the best part of the boat. I'm at the butt end, the wrong You're end. You're not of the supposed boat. to be there. But that's the way bass fishing works with a guide. Yeah, that's the way it works. Anyway, not saltwater guides. No, yeah. not so much. Yeah, not so much. But he, he's throwing his black spinner bait, mm -hmm. and I just put what I had on. I, I fish a chartreuse spinner bait. Yeah. I caught three fish before he caught one. <laughs> and I think it's just a question of I fish it with confidence. With confidence, so yeah. But that I, is a killer right there. I would definitely right take a color like this and fish like the edge of a very shallow flat, uh, just a bass-type lure, and mm -hmm. I'll, I'll catch most of your fish. Now, uh, just to be clear, this one and this one, you don't necessarily tie it directly onto the line, do you? Yes, just tie, tie it directly onto the line. <coughs> I mean, if, if you like a snap or a snap swivel, it doesn't matter. Yeah. But most people will just tie directly to this. Okay. And don't do anything except cast it out and reel it in. Now, I've had people on the boat, and I've put this on. Uh, maybe not this color, but I put a rattle trap on, and they're like, you're going to fish with that? It, it's, again, it's a, a lure that started out in freshwater, mm -hmm. just like a spinnerbait did. There's not a saltwater fish that doesn't get real angry at, <laughs> at rattle traps. Yeah. Again, 
you fish them just like you would a spinnerbait. You don't have to know anything. Mm -hmm. You don't have to to have the the practice technique of yeah. walking the dog or, or working. Or yeah. you cast it and reel it in, and you let the yeah. rattles do the work. And they come in just a myriad of sizes. Mm -hmm. There's even a floater, which I don't understand. Yeah, well, but I've never had one of those, but it, it does exist. Mm -hmm. But I like that color. That's why I didn't get the standard silver and blue. Yeah, that might have to get one of those. Pretty color. <laughs> and then, and you were talking about before we came on air here, yeah. the younger generation. What do the younger generation know? They don't know anything about <laughs> spoons. A lot of them. Don't. <laughs> we got a couple of young guys here at the store that, that this one here. Mm -hmm. He fishes spoons. <laughs> what, did you just? Was that a what? What hand signal was that? <laughs> Number oh, okay. peace, peace. <laughs> um, I grabbed a copper one because that's what I would generally put on. I, I yeah. like a copper. Yeah. We, we will sell a hell of a lot more silver and gold ones. But yeah. Anyway, there are a lot of young people that don't know about spoons, and I think probably more fish, redfish and trout. Mm -hmm. so these things date back to the 1910s. Mm -hmm. uh, there was no such thing as free spool. There weren't yeah. spinning reels. There was, there was no braid. Mm -hmm. There wasn't monofilament. Yeah. And way back when, this is what they were using. They were catching fish on spoons. And they use it all over the world. All over the world. And yeah. they still work mm -hmm. as effectively as they once did. And they're weedless versions and treble hook versions. And yeah. They, they work. Mm -hmm. And the young guys should probably put at least one in their, in their box. Give it a shot. Yeah. Now let's talk about this one right that, This one is a little unusual. It's called a, 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 chatter, a chatter bait. Mm -hmm. It has this plate mm -hmm. in the front which wiggles yeah. and you can fish it right on the surface or you can use the lead head and let it go down and it wiggles like crazy mm -hmm. and if you tie you, you fish it with a wiggle tail type a paddle tail type soft plastic yeah you've got lots of vibration going mm -hmm. which especially for our part of the world chocolate bayou trinity yeah this water is not very clear yeah very seldom you have clear clear water there mm -hmm. Uh, so things that, that move a lot are, are very effective. Well, again, a lot of the young guys, well, a lot of people, they think of it only as a, a bass bait. Yeah. Because that is where it came from. But it works really well mm -hmm. on redfish and trout. Something that doesn't get enough play mm -hmm. is a waking bait. Mm -hmm. Here's a big old fat one from Sixth Sense. They have some of the best colors that have ever been made in lures. Yeah. Really cool oddball colors, some of them. Yeah. But, uh, what about it? It just wakes right under or right on the surface, mm -hmm. and it leaves this, this wiggly track. And trout, redfish, or flounder mm -hmm. will get real angry at it. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've had flounder, you know, come out of the water to hit the thing. Bam! It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and that and that it, one is just not common at all. It's just people, not, people that, that love them, buy them, and use them, mm -hmm. or people that use them love them and buy them something <laughs> like that. I mean we sell them yeah. but it's not at the quantity that I would think would be because yeah. they're very very effective mm -hmm. not so much in a real windy situation like last Sunday at 25 miles an hour right that's a little too much chop on the water yeah but what's kind of normal is stuff or mm -hmm. early in the morning mm -hmm. these things are deadly and speaking of waking yeah old school old school old school broken back red fin it's yeah. a jointed long lure that's fairly light. It's pretty difficult to cast with a bait casting rod. Mm -hmm. You want generally you want a spinning rod for this just because they're, they're okay. light. But they're fished with it just barely wiggling under the surface, and it looks like a snake coming at you. Mm -hmm. And for many years, this was the mm -hmm. lure to fish in Baffin for seven, eight, nine, ten pound trout. This was the lure. Yeah. Uh, and, and it it's, still works too. It still works. It's just people don't don't use it, especially young young guys. Yeah, they haven't ever fished this thing, and it is enormously effective. Mm -hmm. But again, they, they make a smaller one that's really cool. But it's you, you are not casting that on a bait. <laughs> that, ain't that one absolutely is a spinning rod. The, the thing is, is fairly light for its size, so there's some wind resistance there. Yeah. So a spinning rod works best for this. Okay. And then speaking of really old school, a popper. With a cupped head like a, like a popping cork. Yeah. Look at that. And that the lure by itself fishes very very well for trout. Yeah, but you can uh, also pop it. 
you pop it. Yeah. Uh, you don't fish it real fast for trout, but mm. you can if, if they're actually scattering bait. Yeah. Pop, 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 pop. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But generally you go pop, let it rest, pop, let it rest. Yeah. Which brings up the oldest school. Mm -hmm. The oldest school was things like head and chuggers. Yeah. Which were, they were never designed as a saltwater bait. Mm -hmm. It was the original, well, not the original, but it was one of the first plastic baits made. Yeah. Um, it's just a cut faced, chugging, noise making top water. Mm -hmm. And again, a baffin special. Take one of the hooks off, whether it's the front or the back, tie a leader on it, mm -hmm. and put a streamer fly behind it. Look at that. And all the trout were caught on the streamer fly. This mm -hmm. was just used like a popping cork. Yeah. But it had a hook on it, so if they came up and ate it, they're fine. Yeah. But the fish were caught on the fly that was trailed behind it. Mm -hmm. And you pop it, and the fly darts like crazy. Yeah. And then it slowly sinks. Or modern day, one with sort of lead eyes behind it, it darts and it really moves yeah. around a lot. Yeah. Because of the lead eyes jumps way up in the water and then falls down. Yeah. And it can be a very, very, very deadly, old, old, old school yeah. way of catching trout. And it's not something they've seen. Mm -hmm. So if you've got some four and a half year old trout out there that are pretty big and you yeah. want your hero. They've seen everything. They've seen everything. Yeah. They, they, they know which end of a, of a shrimp is rigged with either the tail or up by the horn. They're, they're, they're probably not eating that. They, yeah. They'll also edit the hooks when they get to be that age. Right. And they go, must add. No, 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 no. no. I only eat owners. <laughs> I'm more I like, of a VMC like guy. <laughs> <I'm more laughs> they're that good, huh? Yeah, they're, they're that fussy. You know? when, they get, when a trout gets that old, I think they're that fussy. Yeah. But anyway. This is extremely old school, mm -hmm. older than the broken back red fin. Yeah. But it's a, an enormously effective thing, uh, mostly for trout. I'm, I'm sure redfish will hit it. Yeah. Um, and flounder certainly will. Well, 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 let me once ask. The flounder gets mad, he'll eat it. He'll come up and eat anything. Let me ask you this: Which one is maybe, maybe confusing is the right word, but most vexing to you that people don't use? Is it the is it the spoon? Well, the spoon because of age. Yeah. Uh, no. Very, a lot of young people just don't use them at all. Mm -hmm. And I know how effective a broken back redfin is. Yeah. I've caught a bunch of trout on it yeah. years ago. But I, I used to fish uh, in Port Aransas. I'm from Dallas, but we'd go to Port Aransas, and I'd, I'd mm -hmm. figure out a way to get there three times a year in the summertime. Yeah. So that's much closer to Baffin, where this got famous. Mm -hmm. And it's baffling to me why more people don't use these and why... They are way back in the shelves yeah. in stores nowadays. They should be more popular than they are. Well, there you go. Uh, you heard it from Uncle Kerry himself. We're going to let you get back to the tiki bar now. I made most of it up. <laughs> We're going to let you get back to the tiki bar now. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel. And we will be back uh, soon uh, with Uncle Kerry and uh, maybe some more information that you can use next time you head out.